Today I'm going to explain how to approximate the value of pi by Newton approximations. It is a really interesting method. It's one of the most interesting methods through the uh, history of mathematics. So uh, in this uh, approximation, I'm going to use three things plus Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to use the equation of the circle, the generalized binomial theorem uh, by Isaac Newton, and the flux flexion method, and also by uh, Isaac Newton. This is uh, similar to how to uh, introduce the area under the curve, which is what we call it today the integration. All right, so let's start by that. I'm going to graph this semicircle, and this semicircle has a center one half, it goes from the origin, and the center is one half and zero. And I have here uh, in the middle, the midpoint here, I graphed a vertical line on uh, the, that radius or uh, that diameter. And this, of course, since it's the midpoint, there would be one force and zero. So let's say this is, I'm going to call this A, and this is, uh, I think I call this here B, and this is C, and this is D. Just in case, because we're going to use that in computing the areas here. Okay, so let's start with the equation of the circle. So again, this is a semicircle, so I'm going to consider the positive part of the circle, not the negative part. But let's start with the, uh, uh, write the equation of the circle. So I have x minus 1 half, because it's the center, is 1 half, plus y squared, and no, because it's minus 0, so I wrote just y squared, equals the radius squared, which is 1 fourth, is 1 square, uh, 1 half squared is 1 fourth. Alright, and then I will extend this one, so I have x squared, 1 half times 2 times x is x plus 1 fourth plus y squared equals 1 fourth. Now let's clean that. Uh, I have 1 fourth and 1 fourth is cancelled out. And then if I evaluate, so I'm going to uh, evaluate y, so that would be y, I'm going to do it in one step. So y equal, so y squared equals x, or x minus x squared, so y equals the square root of uh, x minus x squared. Okay, and we can uh, factor it, so I'll take factor it this equal to uh, x times 1 minus x, and now I can reintroduce that y equals x to 1 half, times 1 minus x to 1 half. So do you see how I got this? So I factored x here, and then I split the square root, and then I turn it to the form exponential form. All right, now I'm going to use the generalized binomial theorem in uh, representing y. So I'm going to write down the, the formula first and then apply it. Uh, so the formula said that is 1 plus q to m over n equals 1 plus m over n times q plus m over n times uh, m over n minus 1 over 2 factorials times q plus m over n times m over n minus 1, m over n minus 2, q squared over here, uh, I'm sorry, this is q squared and this is q cubed over 3 factorial. So actually the same uh, when it's squared, you have 2 factorial, so they have the same number. Let's write, so it goes this way, and plus plus. And I'm going to write uh, six terms here. Yeah. So here, if I look at this one, I want to write 1 minus x to 1 half here. So 1 half, that means that q, this one, I have q is negative x, and I have m 
is 1, and n is 2. So let's introduce that. So I have here 1 minus x to 1 half equal 1, and I'm, uh, this m over n is 1 half times q, which is negative x, so that would be negative 1 half x, and I'm going to write that down from here for the time, negative 1 eighth x squared, a negative uh, 1 16 x cubed, negative uh, 1 over, uh, sorry, 5 over 128 x to the fourth, and one more time, minus 7 over 256 x to the fifth minus da 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 so it's, it goes to infinite number of uh, terms okay so now I'm going to multiply this by x to the one half so x to one half times one minus x to one half is I'm going to multiply everything by x to one half so I have here x to one half minus one half x to 1, 2 over 2, and 1 half is 3 halves, minus 1 eighth x to 5 halves, minus 1 over 16, x to 7 halves, minus 5 over 128, x to 9 halves, minus 7 over 256, x to 11 halves, and also minus. All right, so now I am done with the generalized binomial theorem. But there is something. I can't get a value uh, for x right now. So now I am going to use the fluxion method, okay, is to compute the area under the curve in terms of x, and then I will evaluate it from 0 to x, which is one force here. Okay, so the area of the fluxion is to take the similar to the integration, so I'm going to multiply everything here, that would be, uh, add the power, add 1, so that would be 3 halves, divided by uh, 3 halves, and each term would be the same. So I have here the area, I'm going to call this the area, of A, B, D, equal, here, uh, I have here uh, 2 third x to 3 halves minus, I'm going to write the, down, uh, the, the numbers from here, so 1 fifth x to 5 halves, and then um, I have 1 minus 128 x to 7 halves, and again so the idea is, it's a lot of computations here, add 1 and then divide by 9 halves, so I'm trying to get the, um, the numbers faster, so 1 over 28 x to 7 halves, and then 1 over 72 x to 9 halves, and then uh, minus 7 over 256 x to 11 halves, minus uh, okay all right so now we compute the area here's from zero to one force so here's from zero to one force that means that I evaluate x is one force so if I ever evaluate at x is one force this is the area Okay, I will get the area of ABD, and this is a really long number, that would be 0.07677, uh, So now, again, what I did here is I used the equation of the circle, Okay, for this semicircle, and then I got this equation, 
and I evaluated this equation through the generalized binomial theorem and I got this equation here and then I got the area by using the flexion method and evaluated it at x equal one fourth. All right, so now I am done with this one, this area, and I got this area, that number. I may need this space, so I want to keep this, this number here. So I may need this later. All right, now I'm going to this one here, this area here, this one. So this is a right triangle, okay? I know that this is this this is the radius, so that must be one half. And I know that this is one force, because this is one force, this is a midpoint, so that would be one force. So now by using Pythagorean theorem, I can get this. So this BD squared, BD squared equals uh, one half squared, the hypotenuse, minus one fourth squared. So that means that to equal one fourth minus one over sixteen. So that would be equal to twelve over sixteen. That means that BD, you take the square root of both sides, so BD is square root of three over four. So now I got this is this BD, which is the height of the triangle, is uh, uh, square root of four, square root of three over four. Okay, but now I can get the area. I can get the area of the triangle BCD. So the area of BCD, BCD. Oh, let's say the triangle BCD, triangle BCD. This is equal. Equal what? Half the height, the height times the base. So the height I just computed it is the square root of three over four times the base is one fourth. So I have one times square root of three times one is one square uh, square root of three. Four times four times two is thirty-two. And this is the second thing. So I got the area of this sector. And I got the area of that triangle. But where is pi? I didn't get pi yet. So this is a fabulous thing here. All right. So look, this is one force. This side is one force. It's half, half of the hypotenuse. But that means that this uh, this angle is thirty. And if this thirty and this is ninety, so that must be sixty. Is that clear? One force and one half, so half of the hypotenuse, so that this is a theorem, geometric theorem, that this angle must be 30, and if this 30, that must be 60. Okay, if this 60, and this whole angle is 180, that means that this, the whole sector ACD, is one third of the semicircle. So if I want to get this area, the area of ACD is a third of the area of the semicircle. But can I get the area of the semicircle? Yes. So the area, the area of the semicircle is equal half pi r squared. Pi r squared is the area of the circle, so the, the semicircle's area is one half of pi squared, which is one half pi, and what is r? r is one half, so one half is squared, that would be one fourth. Okay, so the area of the sector, of this sector, is third of, uh, let's say this, one eighth pi. Right? So the area of, let's combine this, A, C, D equal one third times one eighth pi. One third of the whole area. So that means there's one third that would be one over 24 pi. Now there is a pi. 
there is a pi. So now I have a way to approximate pi. So now I have this area, this area is 1 fourth, 1 over 20 fourth pi, the whole area. And you have this, that number, that long number, and I have this is this number. So now I have two ways, I have two ways to evaluate this curve, the sector ABD. ABD is that number, but ABD also the whole sector minus the right triangle. So let's write that down here. So I have the area, the area of ABD is equal to the area of the sector, the area of area of ACD minus the area of the triangle, the area of BCD. Okay? But this, I got this one here, it's 0.07, uh, 0.07677, Was the area of the ACD, what did we get with the area of the ACD? So the area of the ACD is, uh, I'm sorry, the area of Oh yeah, I, the area of the ACD is 1 over 24, or let's say pi over 1 uh, over 24. Well, it's 1 over 24 pi, so I made it pi over uh, 24. Okay, minus the area of the right triangle BCD, what will what I get for the triangle here? Square root of 3 over... 32. Okay. So you see that this number is pi over 24 minus square root of 3 over 32. So now, if I evaluate this equation, can I get pi? Yes. Use a common denominator and then evaluate pi. So in this way, I got pi, I got pi here, based on a, a Newton approximation 3.14. 1, 5, 9, 2, and then 6, 6, 8. Okay, so this is what I got for pi. It is really, really amazing, right? It's awesome that how Newton explained this method. Again, he started by the semicircle. You see how amazing it is to uh, pick this point of the center, the one half, and then take the midpoint so to compute this sector, he, anyone can take any other point to get a sector, but he used the midpoint to make that easier, you see, to make that easier to get this angle of 60 and compute this, uh, uh, the, the, this sector as a ratio of the, uh, the semicircle. It is amazing. It is amazing that he used the fluxion method. He is the one who invented and discovered the fluxion methods. He is the godfather of calculus. So thank you so much for watching this video. I am going to do more and more about pi approximation. There are many other uh, scientists and mathematicians uh, used another uh, other uh, approximation. So please watch the video. Don't forget to subscribe in my channel. I'm going to do more and more many interesting uh, topics. Thank you and have a good one.